I'm John Henry Wilson with SA Cricket Magazine. I'm here with John O'Bird, uh, Western Province List A cricketer and South African under 19 batsman. We're going to shoot the breeze and ask some formal questions as well and just get to know John as as a person and as a cricketer. John, my first question for you is it's a bit cliched, but it is relevant. When did the love of cricket first start for you and, and how? Um, probably at probably about the age of five. Um, every weekend I'll go watch my dad play club cricket. He played for about like 25 years club cricket every weekend. And I remember going to go watch him every weekend and watching the whole day. And all the other club cricketers would come and throw an underarm to me and I'd hit a ball. And pretty much I got my love from that, from my dad and club cricket, yeah. Okay, just for relevance, what cricket club was that? I played for Pinelands Cricket Club. At Pinelands, okay. Pinelands. Did you guys grow up in Pinelands? We have, yeah. Okay, are you still live there? Yeah. Alright, alright, nice. Um, and then talk about sort of your progression in terms of formal cricket. I guess we can start, you know, as a, as a primary school, schooler and then into high school. Where do you think uh, the turning point was in terms of, okay, you know, you could potentially one day make a career of this? Um, I remember in under 10 playing hardball cricket. Um, I kind of got my, call it, mini cricket career off to like a good um, start. I made a few hundreds under 10 cricket and under 11 cricket. And I remember in under 12 they moved me up to under 13 at cricket. Bit of a challenge, but I found it good um, playing with a bit of older people. And then under 14, I remember end of grade 8, they moved me up to first team cricket. And that was quite challenging, okay. playing with 19-year-olds and being 14 or whatever. So um, that kind of got me to realise that I actually have the potential to play at that level and even higher. And, yeah. and w would you say that drive was kind of just, was it necessitated or, or put upon you? Was there ever a time when you thought as a 14-year-old you'd love to just be playing under 15? Or as, an under, as a 16, under 17? Like when you're 14 or 15, you'd want to be playing with your friends at, at your age and kind of being the only 14-year-old in the team. I was kind of like the odd one out. I didn't know many people in the team, but luckily they invited me and they were very, very good to me. So I enjoyed it. Okay. And do you feel the same sentiment now at sort of a higher age level? I mean, playing under South Africa under 19, now in Western Province List A with, I'm sure... 20, 30 year olds, maybe not 30 year olds, but yeah. With the under 19 team compared to like the 30 year old men, it's a bit different because they're kind of my age. And with the older men, they've been playing the game for much longer and you have more to learn from them. They have a wider knowledge of the game and they kind of bring that down on me. So I'm learning a lot while playing with them and I'm enjoying it. Okay. If we are to sort of put aside your, your natural talent and your ability and your passion for, for cricket and particularly batting, yeah. What is it for you that sort of makes you tick as a cricketer? Why, why, okay, obviously you grew up in, with your father in the club mm. cricket scene, but, but why cricket? Why not hockey or rugby or, or, or something else? What is it about the mechanics of the game that appeals to you? Yeah, it's actually quite a tough question. I don't know, um, the feeling of making a hundred, nothing can beat that in my opinion. Um, yeah, reaching that hundred mark, nothing can beat that. Like I've played rugby for quite a bit, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to play for a while because of cricket. But that feeling of getting to 100 or winning a tight game in the final over, nothing can beat that. Okay. Also a cliched question, but worth asking, is 50 is not enough for you? 100 are the way to go. And is that, is that the mentality in your coaching as well? Yeah, definitely. From Gio, like an, if I told Gio after a weekend I got to 50, Gio would be like, how come you didn't get to 100? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so when I get to 50, I, I sh I'm normally in. Like, by that time, I'm in, and I should be pushing on, unless you get a good ball. But generally, I'd like to push on and get to that 100 more. Okay. Talk us through your, your coaching psyche, you know, for yourself and alongside your coach. What is it that you, you put into, you, into your sessions, be they indoor, outdoor, one-on-ones, etc., that potentially set yourself apart um, to, to go higher than others? I mean, I train pretty much every day, and Gio and I work on the simple things, really, like underarm drills, getting my weight forward. We don't try and complicate things too much. So we kind of work on things that can kind of build your base and build you forward. And, yeah, we work on that pretty much throughout the week and do that week in, week out, and kind of get it into my body. So, I mean, how, how long is an indoor with, with Gio and...? Um, with Gio, it can vary probably like an hour to an hour 20, and then normally... Like at um, school or wherever, I'll train for about two hours, but that'll be a bit of bowling too. It's about an hour of batting, hour of bowling. 
Okay. So generally between one and two hours of training a day. Let's, let's touch on your bowling because uh, so you're making the news for your batting. Um, we were chatting offline now that you say you're returning to left arm Chinaman having bowled some seam up previously. Um, what's the thinking behind that? Are you, do you have ambition to be an all-rounder or you just want to contribute in the nets a bit? From the age of, I think, 11 to 15, I bowled Chinaman pretty much all the time. And I don't know why, but I got bored of it. And I thought being a tall, big oak, I could run in and bowl quickly. But I've bowled in a few games lately and my body hasn't felt too great off them. So thinking of going forward, um, Chinaman would be a better option. And it would be a, quite a unique bowling action, if you put it that way. There are not many Chinaman bowlers in the world at the moment. You, you're growing up in an age where, uh, certainly myself and, and the guys behind the camera didn't, where you know the, the ambition for an up-and-coming cricketer was was first-class provincial franchise eventually, and hopefully South Africa. Now there's a lot on offer outside of that. You know, there's kind of T20 leagues springing up everywhere. Um, from a I guess coming from a purist point of view to a, a relative new schooler, what is the ambition for a modern day cricketer? Is it still, you know, the, the highest level or is it okay to kind of uh, realise that there are little junctures along the way? Like my dream would always be to play for my country at pretty much every level and then being the penultimate to be playing at test match cricket and then but being a big oak and being able to hit the ball far, I do enjoy T20 cricket and I wouldn't mind playing in a few T20 leagues around the world, which would be pretty cool. But yeah, test match could be the ultimate goal. Okay. So. So a quick one. How do you find juggling between sort of three day, two day, and? Well, three day and one day. You don't play any two days now, no. no. We play a few, but like okay. smaller levels. So yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a bit different. I have to take a bit more time to get in with the red ball moving around a bit more than the white ball. Mm. So a bit more time to t- to get in, get my eye in. Whereas white ball cricket, you get a ball in your arc, first ball of the game, I'm going to go for it pretty much. So yeah, it's a bit different. But Maybe yeah, maybe it's time to talk us through that, that list of 100 that you got here. Uh, it was against Easton's, correct? I mean, with all respect to Easton's attack, I'm sure they were pretty solid. But to get 100 as quick as you did on debut, that, that speaks a lot about rolling with the pressures. Uh, is that something you are aware of, that you, know, you are not as pressurised as some? I actually enjoy the pressure. I feel I perform under pressure. I actually only found out I was playing that game the night before. I got called by the coach and a player got injured in the three-day game. And they told me, oh, you're going to come play in the 50 over game. And I was quite shocked, but very keen to play. And um, got out here. It was quite tough in the beginning. I think I had about a 50 strike rate for my first 30 runs. And then from then, I think I got a free hit. And I hit mm. a guy straight over his head. And from that ball, I kind of yeah, got to my 100 pretty quickly. Are you quite cognizant or um, knowing out in the middle of what your strike rate's looking like and should it be higher or should it be, you know, how should we go pacing yourself? Yeah, I feel I can get a bit impatient and I should know that I can catch up in the end. Um, that's kind of how I get out majority of the time. Like I feel, okay, I've got 10 from 25 or whatever in the ODI game and I feel I have to try and hit a, a good ball for boundary and then I kind of throw my wicket away. So I have to try to be more patient on that and know that in the later in, latter innings I can catch up on that. Fair play. Now, again, juggling, juggling schoolwork with uh, the onset of a, a semi-professional career, I mean, your folks are, are helping you through that, I'm sure? They are helping me through <laughs> it. Um, I've actually fallen a bit behind on work. Uh, yeah, I've fallen a bit behind. I have to catch up. I know I'm getting a tutor coming up now, so hopefully my marks will get a bit better. But, yeah, okay. it's hard to keep the work going and all the cricket around that. And have you been pleased with how the Western Province management and the coaching staff have sort of dealt with you so far and a welcoming atmosphere? Yeah, they've been very welcoming and everyone in the team kind of, they've been welcoming. Mm. Um, they kind of like haven't looked down on me for being a younger player and joining the team. They've all welcomed me in, had a good vibe and yeah, we've had a good time. Is the communication is the communication thorough? I mean, understandably, you got the call up the night before because of a player injury. But I mean, yeah. do you know from week one to the next week whether you're playing or not, or you just sort of wait on the call? I mean, I've only played two games, so no. I know the game that we played now versus Northern Cape. I got informed about that pretty much in the beginning of the week, mm. so I knew I was playing the whole week. And yeah, they they do let me know on everything.
Okay. Actually, in my 50 over debut, I didn't get chirped that much, but in Africa Cup, I got a bit of chirping. Being the younger guy, I remember we played um, Eastlands in Africa Cup too, and they'll chirp me, oh, young guy playing, whatever, whatever. I'm not going to mention every chirp, but <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I did get chirped quite a bit, but it's part, okay. of the, part of the game. You're all with it. Yeah. Cool.